Okay, seems like we've got a good number of participants into the session now, so I'll get things underway. Uh, so good afternoon, I'm Jeff Ruddle, I'm UCAS's Strategic Development Director, um, and this afternoon I'm going to run a short webinar for you uh, to communicate some details around UCAS's plans for the digitalization of our schedules and uh, certificates. Uh, I'm joined today by our Operations Director, Lindsay Poyner, as well. Um, Lindsay is, may help me out with some of the questions uh, that uh, may come through later. Uh, but for now, in terms of the uh, the session and what we're planning to do uh, for the, this uh, this webinar, is um, we'll do a, a short presentation. I, I don't have many slides at all within here. That's probably going to last around uh, fifteen minutes or so, just to to talk you through um, what UCAS's plans are. Uh, around the digitalization of our accreditation schedules and certificates um, in there. We're also following that. I've, I've got five um, questions that we're going to do using uh, using polls on Zoom. We'd like to get a bit of a immediate feedback from the participants about uh, how you feel and some of the, the, uh, the changes and things that we're proposing um, in there so we can gauge a bit of um, you know, how the customers think we need to take some of the, uh, the aspects that we're going to be looking at. Following that, we'll then go into um, a more open Q&A session. Uh, it's worth saying that um, yeah, we're not going to be reading out the names and companies of the people that send through um, any questions on there. So it's kind of anonymous from that side. We will know um, who you are from your submission, but uh, we won't be, be reading that out to the, the whole group on that. The, the session is being uh, recorded. Um, we will be distributing it afterwards. So if you do want to share it with any colleagues um, in there who didn't get the chance to, to attend, then they will be able to see the recording afterwards. Um, also, uh, when the webinar closes, there will be a short survey which will give you the opportunity to provide uh, more free text feedback uh, if you have any other uh, opinions or views around the schedule and certificates, things you really want us to take into account. So there's a sort of two or three question short survey afterwards that will pop up once the, uh, the webinar closes down. That will also be accessible afterwards. Uh, and when we send around the recording, there will be a link to that survey in there. Okay, so I think that's uh, enough of the, the introductions uh, things sorted out on here. So just want to take you through a little bit of what our, our plans are, what our current thoughts are around the digitalization of our schedules and certificates. Uh, before I go into the, the, the sort of the details and things on this slide, sort of the headlines and some of the things that we're looking uh, to do, it's worth sort of, for those who are perhaps not as aware, just stating kind of where we are with the, the current approach that we use. So our, our schedules of accreditation, the document that contains your the, our customer scopes um, in there is um, essentially it's just a PDF document uh, on our website with a search facility over the top of it. There is a little bit of, of keyword data in the background that helps to drive some of the searching, but a lot of the searching is done off of the schedule content. And the schedules are, are managed uh, in Microsoft Word. They are, the content is managed by your assessment managers um in there but it is a, a reasonably free form format in there and that that has um you know, causes some challenges around the consistency of data which causes challenges around searching and things like that within there at the moment but that that's the current structure for our schedules our certificates we did move over about five years ago now to to e-certificates um we use a, um, a system on there that issues them out for us at the moment on that. There are a couple of limitations in there on that, which are not quite exactly how we'd like them to be. One of which is that um, there can only be one user from an organization that can access the certificates to kind of share them for, for an organization. So that's, you know, for some of our larger customers, I'm sure that's a bit of a challenge. Um, and also there's no public registry of the certificates in there. So whilst you can, sort of uh, discover it and, and verify it from the QR code that's present on there. Um, you can't um, go and search it through it on the UCAS website and find a, a copy of it on there to, to verify it in that way. So those, yeah, there are, you know, whilst we're quite happy with a number of areas of these certificates, there are some bits that we'd like to kind of improve in that area. But overall, we're looking to, to uh, run a project which is going to look at digitalizing the schedules and certificates together uh, and, and delivering them um, you know, in a way that we think is going to bring through quite a number of improvements. Um, the first part on here, and obviously, you know, what we're looking in principle to do is database that content, that scope information, and that certificate information in there. Uh, one of the big outcomes and benefits of that will be consistency around the content and the format. So meaning that where organizations are accredited for the same activity, 
uh, that will appear consistently between uh, schedules on there. That will help interpretation from people who are looking to find an accredited supplier. It will also help to ensure that all organisations that can conduct an activity return for the same search terms in there, and make it much easier for people using that search to interpret the information that's coming back. Also, through, through databasing that information, that's going to enable much better analytics and information from the, the scopes and change information, which is going to help UCAS with assessment planning. It's going to help UCAS with resource management um, in there. Um, there is also with part of this, one of the reasons that we want to, want to do this is we want to digitalize and want to move them out from being these Word and PDF documents into more data uh, and information that's more digitally discoverable. Uh, we're looking at making sure that um, UCAS accreditation information can be used and discovered uh, within digital ecosystems. And what do we mean by that? Well, the way we're, we're seeing you know, things are moving, expectations are moving, particularly you know, around uh, the expectations on, on products and being able to uh, see the conformity assessment information and the insurance about the assurance about that conformity assessment information on those products quite quite readily quite quickly um, and also that in some cases that being done in a machine readable way not necessarily by by a human within there we're looking at making sure that UCAS accreditation and the information that we provide about the accreditation we give to our customers is usable in these kind of ecosystems, is usable in, in the way that we uh, see things are changing to. But we are also aware that yeah, that's, that's not the only way that people are going to interact with these, these schedules and these, this information. And there's a need to have multiple output options for schedules. You know, we still see that 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 current way that I think they're used quite often at the moment in which um, you know, human interacts with a, a PDF version, maybe it's provided as part of a tender pack um, by our accredited organisations in there, that there is still a need for that, that probably that PDF version that could be taken off system and, and looked at in that way. So we do, we will still be having PDF versions available in there, but probably um, introducing some things called digital identifiers on them, which will enable a lot more linking back to the core information about verification of, of that information in there. So it's probably available for the website for in a HTML format to make it much more uh, user friendly and easy to use on, on the web page, and making sure there's that machine readable output into there to looking at the, uh, uh, the use of it within some of these digital environments on there. I mentioned about digital identifiers. Um, so there's there's various forms of digital identifiers, but probably the things you're most used to are, are QR codes um, on there. So QR codes can be used quite simply within the schedule certificates around the verification of it. But there's more things that we can do with that. And we're actually looking to do uh, some greater information around these to enable it so that um, our customers will in the future be able to link the reports, the certificates, the, the data that you produce uh, back to the accreditation information about that. And that, that link could be time bound. So it wouldn't necessarily show the accreditation you have now, it would show the accreditation that you held at the time that you conducted the work um, in there. And that could be onwards linked onto, onto products. Uh, so potentially you can go from the product to the conformity assessment information about it through to the accreditation that's providing the assurance on that conformity assessment. We're also looking at digital seals. And obviously as we're moving things more into that digital environment, there are um, questions inevitably about you know, bad actors and, and fraudulent activity and things happening within there and how we, we do some of that protection and make sure that people can trust that information that's out there. <clears throat> digital seals is, is one of these ways. Um, you, a lot of people are probably familiar with digital signatures uh, now, things like uh, VeriSign and DocuSign and things like those kind of lines. Digital seals is very similar to that. It's um, it's a it's a way when particularly when a document is produced, uh, essentially of a company putting a seal on it to give coding in the background of that document to ensure that uh, people can be confident in the authenticity of that document and the source of that document within there. So we will be looking to incorporate digital seals into particularly the PDFs, but also some of the data documents that are coming out from there. Um, another part that we're looking at, and this will be, be one of the things I'll be asking uh, for some feedback from you on uh, very shortly, is uh, the schedule history. Um, at the moment, when, when someone interrogates a schedule on the UCAS website, um, they see it as it is at the moment. Uh, they can only see the things that you're accredited for today. 
Um, and they may not be able to see the things that you were accredited for a few weeks ago when they conducted the um, the assessment. Um, so you, when you conducted the conformity assessment work for them in there. What we can uh, potentially do with a, a schedule history is alongside seeing the, the current format of the schedule, you could also see the history uh, of that schedule in there, and that's the changes uh, that have taken place over a certain period of time. I think uh, probably not want to, to do forever for public view, but uh, maybe the last six months, or the last 12 months could be available for, for public information. So when they're looking at a schedule, they can see what has been added and removed over that period of time in there. We also, with this, um, you know, at the moment, our certificates are on one system. Um, our schedules are on our, our UCAS website. We do want to bring them together into a single source. And potentially as well, one of the other things we're looking to do is, is questioning whether uh, the schedule and the certificate need to be separate entities. Um, you know, can we bring them together into a, a single um, single document, single web page um, in there? essentially, and then the certificate ends up being the front cover, as it were, to the schedule, which we feel has some, some benefits in there because there's often some misunderstandings around accreditation. People feel that because an organization is accredited, that therefore everything they do is covered by that accreditation. Well, actually, it is obviously just limited to the uh, the activities that are on your, your schedule of accreditation. And so um, you know, by combining the two together in there, that makes it, it more readily that link when someone's looking for a certificate, which for, for most sort of non-educated people in accreditation is probably what they're looking for is the certificate that they're then drawn on to look at the schedule with the full detail in it as well. That would still mean that the, the certificate would still be in a format such that it could be printed um, as a single page and, and used to um, you know, frame and put up on the wall if that's what you, you want to do with it as well. Uh, the last point and one other thing that we're, we're considering in here is that uh, we would want to do where, where we've got organizations that hold multiple standards from us. So they're accredited maybe as a, an inspection body and a testing laboratory, but they would have a combined schedule. The information would still be uh, clearly marked and sort of separated within the, the way it's presented in there. But rather than people having to hop between separate documents or separate web pages to look at your inspection activity and your testing activity, all of that would be available in, uh, in one area. No. So that's just a little bit of an overview of what we're looking uh, to do. Where are we kind of with this project at the moment? Uh, we're still very much in the kind of design and, and discovery phase with a uh, preferred IT uh, developer that we're working with at the moment on this. Um, so there's still lots of time to, for us to get input, to, to make changes, to decide exactly which way we're going to go on, on here. We're expecting probably to go into doing some of the, uh, the sort of testing and, and trialing of this uh, probably in, uh, earliest Easter 2024, but more likely probably a few months after that um, into there. And it's unlikely that we'll be launching anything publicly available on this until much later in 2024 um, in there. So that's the time frames are probably nothing publicly available until about a year uh, from now on this. So we have got time to, to get your, your input and your thoughts into there and take them into account into the design that we're, we're doing. Um, so that's that's a little bit of the overview that I wanted to provide you with some details. It, it, there's a lot more in there. I didn't want to go into too much depth uh, right now for, for everybody. But what I do want to go on to now is um, a number of polls. Uh, and I'm hoping uh, now that these are uh, going to come up uh, for you uh, for, from, from Zoom. And you'll be able to um, sort of work your way through these and uh, we'll see some of the responses as they come through. So that there should be five questions for you in the polls that have, have now hopefully come up on, on screen. Uh, the first one is we always want to get uh, some gauge some detail about how supportive you are um, of the idea of a single schedules for multiple standards. Um, obviously, if you're a if you're a single standard organization, um, you can select the middle option because you probably don't have too much of an opinion on that. But if you do have multiple standards, we'd be really interested to, to hear your feedback on that. Um, your views about how supportive you are of, of combining the schedules and certificates together into a single document. Um, also, how important you feel it is for us to incorporate digital seals onto the documents that we're putting out there so that there is that uh, information that's, that's available to people about the authenticity of the document, the source of the document um, in there. How important is it to you around the consistency of the, the wording and the formatting of the schedule so that 
the information about the accreditation you hold, if that if you hold the same scope or same scope items as a uh, another organisation in there, that those appear in exactly the same way between those those different. Um, and then lastly, um, how important do you think it is that we have a, a publicly available schedule history so that uh, people looking at it can see the changes, the, the additions and the, the removals from that schedule over a defined period of time? Like I said, it's not, it, it's not going to be forever. Um, we want to look at that, that time in there, but probably at least several months uh, on there. So I think um, you know, hopefully talking through those it's given people a little bit of time to uh, to work their way through um, those polls that are hopefully they're available for people um, in terms of the presentation um, we're concluded on that I'm going to move on now to see if there's any uh, Q&A so you should uh, those of you who have got any questions um the q a function is available in zoom so if you want to type your questions into there and uh, myself or lindsay will uh, come through to uh, to do those so if i just uh, take a second just have a quick look at the questions that have come through and then we'll get on to answering them Okay, um, I can see that we've had uh, one question through, first of all, which is um, particularly sort of relates to clinical trials, but I think is probably also relevant to um, other sectors in that as well, is that uh, sometimes these these clinical trials, and I, I know in, for sort of the construction sector as well, that projects go on for many years um, in there, and often there is a want to kind of look back at the uh, the history of the, the accreditation about whether they were accredited for certain activities at the time they, they did that work um in there I, I think we've got to strike the uh the right balance in there of, of not giving too much information out um in there which might overwhelm people into what they, they interrogate on there but enough to sort of help them in what they need that schedule history will be available and will be able for people to uh to access from us if they need to we we, we routinely get requests from people asking whether an organization was accredited for a certain activity at a certain time and we, we go back for our records to confirm that um so that that will all still be a service that we provide but maybe sort of more recent ones will be available on on the website it's also worth mentioning that through that the digital identifiers route that i talked about and the there would be the potential to verify the uh that the activity was accredited at the time that the report or the certificate was issued um, in there for using that digital identifier if the, the cab has decided to incorporate that into their reports and certificates as well so that's another route by which that could uh, could be achieved um, another question around the um, schedule history uh, which said that you know would it uh, would it be better to uh, you know, rather than having previous versions of the of the schedules uh, visible would it be better to have a kind of change document that highlights the changes from one schedule to the other uh, yeah that's that's our intention that you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to perhaps sort of look through and go okay I want to have a look at version four and version three and version two uh, but that you would see perhaps a, a timeline of, of over the last six months or 12 months uh, what changes have been made to that schedule um, in there so it wouldn't be a, um, a, a kind of leafing through all the all the back versions as it were Um, another point here, and I think this is this is quite valid, and it was why we wanted actually to get people's opinions on this a little bit, is whether the the, the schedule um, history could be could be misleading. You know, when when things are removed, people could feel that that's been removed for um, a suspension or something along those those kind of lines in there, rather than perhaps um, just that you know, that test is no longer something that that. Uh, organization wants to deliver because it's no longer commercially viable for instance on on there um so yeah that is a, a a perfectly valid point and i think we've got to think about how we present that information um if we do do it publicly uh, you know one of the things that we we are considering building into the background that would be useful for, for ucas and we need to see whether that that is right to be public is kind of the reasons for change but obviously i think it's it's possibly right that someone knows something was removed due to a sanction a suspension uh, but also you know if it was just 
that the, the organization decided to resign that activity, uh, then then that's their choice and they've removed it from it. So that kind of uh, it could we could potentially mark that change history of the reason why those those changes were made. Um, question in here regarding the use of the QR codes um, for um, you know, whether we would anticipate that the uh, the cabs the, the the our customers could use the QR codes on their own certificates and um, uh, and their own reports. Yes, that that's definitely the case. Uh, one of the things there's a, a project that's running a little bit alongside this, which is looking to use. Um, these digital identifiers. So, what the, whilst there would be a digital identifier on the bottom of our certificate or our, uh, the, or the the schedule that we we used to get to you that would people could scan or, or or click on to go back and verify the authenticity of that document if they're looking at it. There would also, in a similar route, we would be enabling you to to generate QR codes, which would link back through to those schedules on uh, on there, so that you could in, attach or or modify your existing QR codes if you're using them on schedules and certificates to be able to link back through to this information. Uh, there's there's further information about that. And I think for um, I, I do know the customer that's asked that question in there. So I might contact them directly on that um, in there because we, we do want to perhaps work with a few organizations that are keen to do that um, to show how it can be, be used. That's an area which we've been working quite closely with the Department for Business and Trade about. They're very interested, particularly around regulated products, uh, that this kind of activity could be enabled in there. So we are looking to build up that functionality and work with a few organizations in those areas to, to demonstrate the feasibility of it. I've got some more more questions uh, on here regarding the schedule history. Uh, I probably knew that one was going to be a, an interesting point that would generate several questions uh, on there. Um, a, a question about whether that would be available to everyone or just available to the accredited organisation. I think that's what we're probably looking to, to gauge uh, through this feedback and, and the discussion that we're having here. Um, I think it could definitely be very useful to an accredited organisation, and that's something that we would be looking to try and implement on there so that an accredited organization could see the change history of, of their schedule on there. But we did also feel that it could be useful more, more publicly because we do get these queries about, you know, uh, whether an organization was accredited for something at a certain time um, in there. And it tends to be quite a recent time period on most of those queries on there. So um, that's why we were looking at it from that point of view. But as with one of the other previous questions on there, we are aware that We've got to make sure that information doesn't get uh, misunderstood and lead to, to inappropriate conclusions. Um, some questions in here from people that where they have, um, I think, multiple accreditations that are uh, registrations that are, that are different, uh, perhaps within the same group. Uh, organization in there about whether those would be separate. Yes, so I think probably didn't mention it at the time, but a, a combined schedule would have to be for um, a single legal entity. So we wouldn't be including several legal entities on the same combined um, schedule. So if you if you uh, have a group organization and you have several um, registrations with us and several accreditations covering different legal entities in that group, they would still have different schedules of accreditation. The combined option would only be for where there's one single entity. Um, we've had one, one question around um, whether we feel that this improvement will, will enhance some of the, the timeframes for updating schedules and certificates. Um, it, and inevitably, we want to make the process more efficient. Um, and that um, is um, something that we'd be looking to do from here. But the actual kind of administration, as it were, of, of updating the schedule and getting the schedule published is only one step in, in the chain um, that of, of getting a schedule change up an update made in there. We are implementing things through our customer portal, which will make it more easy for customers to self-manage some of their contact information, things like that, which we will be able to make flow more automatically through to, to kind of schedule updates. That will help with those areas. But in terms of technical scopes, it, it will still 
the, the main determining step is still the assessing activity of that. And I know um, I'm going to bring in my colleague Lindsay here because I know she's been looking at timeframes about how we can make some improvements overall on the on the times to get schedule changes through. So, Lindsay, I don't know if you want to say a couple of words on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, particularly where uh, customers have made new applications to get new areas of accreditation onto their schedules. I'm particularly interested in how that process works, how it flows, and how we can make that more efficient. So, yes, whilst it's hoped with some of the the, the system changes, we hope to make and the streamlining of the process that we might make a few small gains in, in efficiency from a system point of view. Much of it is, is ensuring that the process from assessment to, to uh, production of that schedule is efficient and timely and that the decisions are made in a timely manner. Evidences are reviewed from, from that perspective. So yeah, that, that is certainly on my agenda for, for, from an operational perspective. But this should certainly help in terms of streamlining and understanding how we can make this more standardised. Hey, thank you for that, Lindsay. Um, uh, one question on here regarding the standardisation of schedule items, um, asking whether there will still be an option for free text to accompany the standard text. Uh, yes, that's that's definitely going to be the case. You know, as, as we've gone through um, over recent months, I've spent quite a bit of time with our uh, some of our assessment teams and things like that, gathering their information about what they, their needs would be. Uh, and whilst we feel a lot of information can be standardised, there is still the, the need for uh, sometimes to add notes about specific um, things that apply to certain organisations, whether they be about making it clear that something is is definitely included on a, on a scope or excluded from a scope, uh, the inclusion of um, customer specific uh, methodology, method names, things on those kind of lines uh, that isn't standardised. So there would the, the the schedules would have a mix of stuff that is standardised where we can. Uh, but also free text ability to kind of supplement that information as, it, as is necessary. Um, one question here about export options um, in terms of the data that's held in the schedules. Um, we'd need to sort of look at, at how that's going to be done. We want to want to protects the data some to a certain extent to make sure that the data isn't isn't scraped and used in a way that we don't want it to be used in there um, but if we're looking at individual organizations wanting to have their schedule information in a different format uh, that's something we can look at within there I mean once we have it database and set up in that way then the ability to kind of export it and take it off system um, is there um, but we want to make sure that we we do that in a controlled way. Okay, um, one question here, I think it's probably regarding our current system or this, I can answer this one quite quickly. Uh, why, why the access to electronic certificates is restricted to uh, a single individual within an organization. Um, we use an, an off the shelf system called a credible, uh, which is a verifiable credentials uh, certificate issuing system in there for our e-certificates at the moment. And, and that is just the way that that system is designed um, in there. So it's, uh, it's not a, uh, as it were, it's something we would rather not have have to be the case, but um, that was the system that we chose at the time. And, and five years ago, there was less options on the market for how we did that in there. And that was a limitation that was was in place uh, on that. But I'd say it's something that as we go forward, we don't want that limitation to, to be in place. Uh, so a question here about the, the search function, whether it would be improved in there, because currently they find the uh, problematic trying to find out who does a, a certain activity and, and, and often you get a, perhaps a lot of false positives as a, as a returns and uh, on there, so you end up having to sift through a lot of information to, to get the answer you need. I mean, yes, definitely. Yeah, for us, one of the key deliverables about this is that the searching is improved um, on there. Yeah, the, at the moment, because the searching is done on the content of the schedule, um, you know, for instance, if you, you search for lead testing in, in water, you're going to get schedules back that include lead. You're going to get schedules back that include water. You're going to get schedules back that include both um, in there. And the ones that have got water, just water or lead on are not necessarily going to have everything that you need. Um, we will be looking at more 
Um, while there will still be that kind of free text searching, also building searching in that's more based upon the database criteria. So you would be narrowing it down to options that do meet what you need. Um, also looking to, to hopefully incorporate other tools such as highlighting the search terms and that in the information that's returned to you um, at that point. So you can hopefully quickly zone in onto the, uh, the information that's of relevance to the search that you've performed. Uh, question here around the uh, the digital seals about whether that would be um, sort of accredited uh, conformity assessment bodies would, would use digital seals on their reports and certificates. Uh, that's that's really an option for them. Um, so as, as I mentioned, a digital seal is something that a, a company can put on the information that they issue that incorporates into their the the source of and the authenticity of of that uh, that document and the, or the the data pack uh, that's in there so that's something that, that companies could do in there at the moment uh, on that you guys are just looking to incorporate it in terms of the things that we would produce um okay we're just looking for a question here about the um how we're approaching the standardization of, of um, the wording of the, the scopes and the documents, because there can be quite a bit of variation uh, in there. Uh, yes, uh, com completely. And that, you know, that is a, is a challenge uh, on there. I think that's why I mentioned that um, whilst we're going ahead quite, quite rapidly with the kind of IT development aspects of this, the real thing, the real rate determining activity in here is going to be again, the standardization of, of a lot of that text into there. Uh, that's we, we've done it in some of the areas that we work within. So we do have uh, kind of tried and, and trusted ways of, of getting that um, standard approach. And we've done it quite heavily with our forensics area and with some of our certification areas already. Um, but what we've kind of found with those routes is that you need to, once you've settled on the term that you're going to call something, you need almost kind of nicknames that sit in the background that, you know, and also known as, so that they would re return in a search term. Uh, so if someone searches for that, they would still find an organization that does that activity, even though that's not how we've decided to describe it exactly in the, in the schedule on there. Um, so a sort of unrelated questions just to pick up on on here. Um, some scopes are a couple of years out of date on the UCAS website. Uh, scopes only get updated when someone changes their, their accreditation. And for some organizations, they get accredited for an activity and uh, that, that's all they do and they don't need to change that. And so their, their change of accreditation would only change um, if something else changes about that organization, maybe if there's a company name change and address change or the standard which they're operating to changes in there. So it, just because uh, uh, the issue date on a, on a schedule is two, three, four years ago, doesn't mean that it's uh, invalid. Um, the fact that it's on the UCAS website means that it's valid and, and can be trusted uh, on there. So that, I mean, the dates, I just show you when, when that version was produced on there really. Uh, how do we intend to deal with flexible scopes in there? That's a great question, uh, and one which uh, have, I've had several discussions with, with my colleagues in UCAS about on there. Um, obviously, talk of things like standardization and um, databasing things is, is great for fixed scopes, uh, but flexible scopes by their nature don't, don't lend themselves towards that. What we've kind of come through on the discussion with people on flexible scopes internally is that um, there are elements of that um, flexibility that can be database. The fact that people have a flexible scope um, on there, for instance, the, the standards and areas that it applies to, we could uh, we could build into that. Uh, but a lot of the flexible scope information will necessarily have to be free text um, on the schedule and descriptive in there. We need to look at, and we are looking at how we make sure that's appropriately represented to uh, people that are viewing it, uh, to make sure they understand it properly and what the capabilities of that organization are. That's a challenge currently with flexible scopes. 
you know, I can understand why sometimes people are looking for someone who can do their work. I'm going to go with someone who's definitely got it on their their scope of accreditation, as opposed to someone who who has got it under a flexible scope. So we need to to bring forward and highlight that in there. We're looking at options which will allow people to sort of include flexible scopes in the in the search criteria. That flexible scopes may be pointed to when there are no search returns coming back or low numbers of search returns coming back and things on those clients. So there's a, a few options that we're going to be looking to do to incorporate that into there. But in terms of the scheduled content, it will mainly be free text. Okay. Uh, another question on here about the uh, whether we would make draft schedules available to customers to, to verify that they're happy with it before publication. Um, I know this is a, a process that's been taken on board in a number of areas where uh, customers prior to an extension to scope grant, for instance, are given a copy of the draft schedule to, to confirm their acceptance of before they uh, before that gets published. We, we would um, ideally like to, to do something like that. Um, it might not be something we produce straight away, but it's something that we would do through our customer portal. So yes, the idea is that, that customers would be able to see draft versions of their schedules um, in there. We need to think about the process side of things, whether we at, you know, definitely require the uh, the approval of the customer for publication or whether it's something that they uh, that's provided for them to, to see beforehand and possibly comment on. So the thought is there um, that we would want to be able to do something along those kind of lines uh, with it in the future. Okay, probably some of the other ones are repeats of other things I've answered or, or just some information which is very useful to us uh, in there, which I'll sort of take on board. Um, one point I just want to bring up for some of the last questions that are on here about the time frame for the kind of standardization of scopes work. Um, we'll, we'll be, I expect when we come to kind of rolling out the, the schedules of accreditation, this will be more for phased way, focusing initially on the um the areas that are more straightforward to standardize uh moving into those that are more complex as we as we go through on that so it's likely that we'll be doing that standardization work during 2024 um and there, there's a there's a question here about whether customers will be consulted um i think we will have some level of sharing some information with with customers we will definitely be using some of our technical advisory committees which i know some customers are represented on in there where there is a, a need for it on that but it, it probably won't be possible to consult all customers on exactly how everything uh, will, will look in there there will be a need for us to decide on on how that will be represented but um, we'll definitely be, as we go through the project, sharing more information about it. So in terms of overall format of schedules and look and feel and things, that is an area that we will be uh, providing some level of consultation about. But we're unlikely to be able to consult upon every area of standardization of scopes. Okay. I think that that covers all the questions that we have through at the moment. There's been quite a few, which is, is great to see. And thank you to everyone for their their comments and input. Um, Lindsay, I just wonder, obviously, you've seen the questions that they've been coming through. Is there anything that you'd like to, to mention to customers in particular? No, no, just if there, the, there's been a couple of questions, particularly about scopes being out of date and requests for numerous um, schedules to be updated. I assume, Jeff, there's some kind of feedback um, email that can that will go off the back of this um, recording. So if people want to feed any particular customer specific queries through to that, we'll make sure they get through to the right people. Yes, and, and, and as always, um, you know, contacting your assessment manager is a good first contact point. But um, yeah, if, if perhaps you've, you've tried that and not been successful, then you sure. go with other, other routes and uh, Lindsay and I will make sure those get through to the right people and get actioned. Yes, please. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions come through. Um, so just to, I think as a quick reminder, uh, here at the end once this webinar closes down um you will get a short uh, survey where you can provide uh, more free text feedback uh, to us about some of the things you feel strongly about we should make sure happen with the new system 
And also, if you feel there's anything that you particularly like about the current system uh, that you would like us to retain, uh, you can also put that that information uh, in there as well. And we'll make sure we take all of this into into account as we we go through the design. Obviously, won't necessarily be able to implement everything that everybody wants. There's there's certain things that uh, we might have to compromise on, but we want to to make sure that we deliver something that's a significant improvement on what we have at the moment uh, and provides a real benefit to uh, to our customers and their clients. So I just haven't seen anything further really come through. Oh, one last question around the recording. Yes, the, the session's been recorded. Uh, we normally do a little bit of editing on it before we send it out. So it will probably be circulated around uh, next week, I would think, um, in there. That will also, if you do not have time to complete the survey when the webinar ends, that recording will also have a link to, to finish that survey as well. So if you want to do it at a later date, you can do. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. And uh, we'll close the webinar down at this point.